Namaskar, I'm uh, Wim. How are you, Wim? Yes, I that, see look, you. Look, we both Not have very blue. <laughs> very blue. Blue. Both have a beard. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I'm at uh, Moab, which is uh, southern Utah. This place is known for, uh, you know, all off-roading stuff they're doing, but essentially these are uh, natural uh, sculptures of art, of rock, incredible uh, natural rock formations close by. Is the Arch, Arch uh, National Reserve. We're just next oh, to that yes. right now. I think I was there two years ago. Oh, is that so? Okay, then. <laughs> Beautiful, the rat yes. rock country. Yes, Beautiful. Yes. Tell me, Wim, what shall we do? <laughs> don't take me, don't take me to the cold water. <laughs> let, let, let us go to the, uh, to, the, to the infinite soul through the science of the DNA and for us to pioneer and open up and, uh, and see that we are now coming like the Vedas, the Vedas from such a long time ago and now uh, coming with these Western measurement devices into uh, the justification of what the Vedas already knew for 5,000 years ago. They knew about the cell, the atoms. They knew about DNA, the, uh, the building blocks of, of life. They knew about our hereditary past, about enlightenment is to free the hereditary genetical past. And now we have the measurements devices to show that. I am doing the studies, Sadhguru. Mm -hmm. I'm doing the studies and we both work on the same thing. We want to make people light, not heavy. We want to make people light, not dark. So we come with science like the Kyan Yoga. Kyana Dipena Basvata. Through the, through the science, through the knowledge, we will cast away the darkness. So that's what I do. And then I use very simple techniques like uh, the breathing, which is in the old... Uh, in, it is, in, it is uh, a technique which keeps all of us alive, huh? breathing. Ah, yeah, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> that's naturally, <laughs> but it should not be shallow. It should be uh, gone uh, deeper and then learn to manipulate through the pranayam techniques. I found through the cold, the deep breathing. I found the same principles. And, they, and also in the Vedas, the breath is the, uh, uh, the connection, the bridge between the physical and the non-physical. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we can put our fingers on uh, the, uh, uh, through the signs, on non-speculative ways to give people the best of themselves. Yes, uh, because uh, it's a very brief life. And if the best doesn't come out too very quick, then uh, <laughs> the best thing that's, <laughs> that happens to us is death, unfortunately, for a lot of people, <laughs> because they don't bring out the best in them. They always exactly. find an excuse why they're not at their best. You ask them exactly. why they're not at their best today, weather is bad. How can the weather be bad? Yeah, yeah. It's a bad weather, I don't know. <laughs> so I keep telling people, I don't know what's bad weather. It rains, it must rain, it snows, it must snow. It is sunny, it must be sunny. What is bad weather? I don't know what's bad weather. Because human beings uh, ha find some excuse to see that they're not at their best which is the most unfortunate thing which we have been trying to change in many ways. You know, I must tell you this, uh, when, uh, when I was twenty-five years of age, uh, certain things exploded within me, and I realized if I simply sit here without messing with my mind, I am naturally ecstatic. Every cell in my body is bursting with, uh, with the chemistry of ecstasy. Then I thought, who doesn't want it? Every human being wants it. So the young fool that I was at that time, you know, we can call young people fools now because both of us are at this age, you know. <laughs> 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 so I was 25. I was 25. I sat down and made a plan 
At that time, the world's population was 5.6 billion people. I thought in two and a half years' time, I'll make the entire world ecstatic. But now you see, 38 years I've been on, seven days of the week, non-stop. <laughs> but still, uh, only I think we have touched about a billion people on the planet, but that is still not my idea of humanity. So it took some time for me to understand, people are so invested in their misery and in their limitations that they have set for themselves, that even if you show them the best possibility, they won't take a step, they'll find an excuse why they're not taking that step. You tell them why they're not joyful, they will say pandemic. Before pandemic, why they were not joyful? Because there was no pandemic. <laughs> like this, they will go on. <laughs> and, and exactly, that, that is the pandemic. And it, it, it is come, it coming to an end. You see, the economy is, comp uh, is crashing, and that is the, the weak point of us. That is the greed. Uh, but one thing that happens with economy crashing, you will have thicker ice slabs to go under. Yes, yes, no, because, <laughs> and, and the water will be transparent because it's less yes. pollution. Yes, yeah. Oh, I heard the I last, time, last time you were trying to break some record, uh, your cornea froze and anyway yes. you couldn't see, even the water was clear, you could not see, huh? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But now I, now I, knew, I, now I know I'm not, a, I'm not a seal. I, I'm not, oh, oh, I'm not, I'm a human. <laughs> I don't, I do not, no, no longer don't, need don't, to go Don't compete the with the walruses. Do not compete with the walruses. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm an honorary member, Bakame, uh, of the Polish walruses. They made me a Polish walrus. <laughs> so I am a walrus. I'm not messing with them, and they uh, uh, they think it is an honor to take me on. I say uh, yes. Now, great. Yeah, let's change the world together, like walruses uh, changing the world. How would we do that? I mean, the cold is like Mother Nature. It looks like dark and cold and hostile and negative, but a little bit taken of that cold makes people aware inside, uh, deeper than the way they are able to think of an existence without thinking. And that is like love. Love is like, you don't think, you just want to go to your love. Uh, come on, come that, on, uh, who is doing this to you, Wem? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who is doing this? <laughs> My wife is doing this every day. <laughs> He's loving me, and my little kid is loving me, <laughs> and the world is loving me. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I, I just found out you were 63, I'm 61. And yeah. I'm so vital, I'm so vital. I'm just at the beginning. So, 44 years ago, I, I, I began with this journey, consciously. And then 44 years later, that is now, I actually see uh, uh, it's such a little time span and, st and yet physically we are changing. So I am working right now with the DNA researchers, the best of them of the world, to show that we are able to get into the DNA and change it. That's, that, that's, yes, that's uh, exciting. We have uh, certain uh, yogic initiations and processes through which, uh, you know, I'm telling you, this is very hard for people to believe. Hours, the very shape of one's face, eyes, voice, everything changes because the genetic structure changes so dramatically in 24 hours time. You can rewire your brain completely in 24 hours time. If you're a willing subject, it cannot be done to you by somebody. If you're willing and if you're willing to work with it, it is very much possible, and uh, some German doctor, you know, I don't usually subject myself to this because I feel it's quite ridiculous, but some German doc doctor insisted on studying my blood and things, and then he said, Sadhguru, your uh, cellular age is only 25. I said, on that one thing, you're right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, last <laughs> year, uh, I was in San Francisco in a laboratory setting as well. And yes, they found out uh, that my uh, stress 
the capacity to battle stress was like a a, a teenager. And that, uh, yeah, okay, nice. That's, uh, that's bad, man. That is very bad. Twenty-five is a mature man. Teenager means what? Ah, <laughs> maybe you don't you, know, but I know. <laughs> you, you say you're feeling like a 23-year-old because you're two years younger than me, all right? <laughs> yeah. Soon teenager. Yeah. I think when you were 21, I was like 19. So I'm talking <laughs> about the same thing about and uh, only we have two years difference. We are like brothers. You are my older brother, I'm younger brother, and uh, we are talking. We finally meet. So Yeah, yeah, nice. I'm the big brother. I'm the big brother, so you must listen to me. Come to India, experience some <laughs> warmth. You had enough of cold. Come on. Huh? Come to South yeah. India, experience warm climate, warm food. Ah, I'll give you hot coffee that will enslave you. You will not leave the place. Once I, once I make masala dosa and coffee for you, you're not going to leave. Hey Amen. <laughs> Family is the best. So wherever, I found out with uh, uh, seven brothers and two sisters that my actual family actually is those who love me, who I love, because I go for the love, and that's my family. And I think when I'm with you there, we have a great into the bottom conversations. We talk about everything. We feel ecstasy of life itself. That is Ananda, the Ananda principle. Yes, when we feel that, we feel that we are the master of the mind. What is the master of the mind? The one who is happy all the time, who can turn <laughs> on happiness. Yes. What, what would you like if you are the master of your mind? Ten cars or happiness? I choose happiness. Happiness <laughs> and, and grace and gratitude and, and, and being vital. And I'm vital like a rabbit and I go everywhere. No, 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 no. Rabbits simply reproduce like anything. Don't be vital like a rabbit. Come on. <laughs> be vital like a man. <laughs> I am, I am, I can tell you, I'm not a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, good. So, uh, I like so, that, uh, uh, I like these tell rocks. Me, tell me, yeah, beautiful rocks out here, and uh, I mean, this is not the best formation. If you move further, a few miles away, most incredible formations. You said you've been here, I'm sure... Uh, Anybody who sees this, uh, it remains in your minds. It's almost like living people sitting there, you know? Such a powerful experience to be there. I think uh, I, I'm just guessing because of its color, it must be very rich in iron or whatever. But when I went there, head to toe, you know, like uh, I had goosebumps from head to toe. Uh -huh. just, just seeing these rocks and being in its presence, the sun was setting, it was almost getting dark. But uh, I think it is the magnetic forces working there. I don't know, whatever. All I know is uh, I don't look at things as magnetic force, nuclear force, electrical force, this force, that force. I just see everything as ingredients of life. So in that sense, tremendous amount of life out there. Uh, we are going there today to explore a little more of that. And uh, tell us something about your, uh, what to say, uh, hmm. Tell me something about the cold. I like warm climates, though. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, talking about rocks, talking about rocks, uh, I've been climbing without gear, rocks like that. Mm -hmm. You say straight up, straight up. Why? Because I could read the rocks. And they, uh, when you read rocks, you can uh, read the safety. You can do the mathematics. The yes. calculation that you go up and that you are challenging the body and your mind. And uh, when you go up and you are up, you're completely in a, a deep peace. I must tell you this, that you're saying this. I must tell you how I got into this whole yoga process. I was uh, around 11, 12 years of age uh, when we went to my ancestral home, my grandfather's place. One of the sport for us... You know, all of us uh, used to gather there, all my cousin, brothers, sisters, everybody, almost 36 of us. And uh, for the young boys, one of the sport was to jump into a well, which is about eight feet in diameter. And uh, in summers, the water would be down 60, 70 feet. So when you jump, you must jump properly. Otherwise, your brains will become a smear on the rocks. 
<laughs> and uh, when you climb up, there is no any steps or no anything. You just have to hold the rocks and climb. The sheer pressure of that, you know, because you're hanging onto your fingertips, my fingertips would bleed. Between the nails, it would bleed simply because of the pressure. So one day we were doing this and I'm very proud that I'm good at it. But a man who was over seventy years of age was standing there and watching. Without a word, he went and jumped into the well. I thought the old guy's finished. But he came up faster than me and I didn't like it. So I asked him how. He said, come and do yoga. So I followed him like a puppy. So why I'm telling you this story is even if you do yoga for wrong reasons, still it works. I, I'm sure you would have loved to meet this man because he lived to be 106 years of age. And uh, at the age of uh, 103 or 104, he, ha he was speaking uh, in a public engagement and he had a mild heart attack. They took him to a hospital and put him in the first floor of a private hospital with, you know, like an ICU with all the tubes and needles and everything. Somewhere in the middle of the night, he woke up. In his entire life, he's never been to a hospital. So he just looked at this, he pulled off everything. From the first floor, he jumped out of the window and escaped from the hospital, a hundred and three or four year old man. Wow. You would have loved to meet him. He was quite a incredible human being, the kind of feats uh, that he performed. Uh, and uh, then I went to him and learned some simple yoga and volunteered in his organization for some time. Uh, he was really an incredible man, uh, mm. your kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there was, no ice, he there was no ice cold yeah. water, he didn't go under that. <laughs> yeah, but he, he would not have any problem with that. My, my oldest participant right now, and she is 98 years old, she is doing the ice bathing as well, and she loves it. And it's not that you all the day are into an ice bath. It's only a couple of minutes. It makes you strong. It activates the deepest of physiology. And that's what I want to meet every day. I say to every all the people, you have to die once a day. You have to go deeper than your experience allows you to be. And if you do that, your fear is gone. And that, no, and that's no, it. I have no fear of the ice, but you know, I'm from South India. Don't try to sell ice to me unless it's an ice cream. I'll sell you the sun. I'll sell you the yeah. sun. <laughs> yes. Warm. <laughs> but you know what, uh, Sadhguru? Uh, uh, when I did a marathon, and I, I'm no runner, I, mm. I did a marathon in the shorts beyond the polar circle in mid-January. I did Without that. Without shoes. But, yes. And when I did it, that, uh, after I saw, I did everything in the ice. I, sat, I stood for hours in the ice. I, I hang by one finger in the midwinter uh, in the air. I run marathons uh, uh, barefoot outside and uh, climb uh, the Himalayan mountains in, uh, in shorts. Uh, all that I did. Now I want to go into the heat. So six months later, with a physiologist, I went to the heat of the Namib Desert, like the south of India, mm -hmm. uh, into the Namib uh, Desert without drinking. And I am no runner, just by the mind, it's following the breath. I run a marathon without drinking, and uh, they saw me losing 5.2 liter of water out of my body. I felt great. And I did it. And that was in the heat. You, that means... You are a superman. You are a superman. I'm just a man. But you call me an elder brother, so you must listen to me. Okay? Yes, I do. <laughs> 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 I always I'm do. Just, <laughs> I'm just an ordinary, very extra, more ordinary than other people. So little extraordinary man, not a superman. <laughs> so <laughs> the important thing is for us to realize that it's not about being superhuman, but it's about realizing being human is such a super thing. And that is what you are ex that is what you are exhibiting to the world. It's fantastic what work you're doing. 
but you must come to South India and eat uh, our masala dosa and our bisibele bath and drink uh, our coffee and you'll go crazy. Yes, I, I'm sure. And you must listen to me because I'm your elder brother. You call me elder brother, now you must take my advice. 2021, you must come down to South India and know all the joys of life, not always holding like this and running and swimming and doing all this. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Seth. You have enough thank records, you, man. You have enough yes, records, I think don't so break too. anything more. Yes, uh, 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 exactly. Not even the English proverb. Break a leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it's, that. But it's fantastic what you have done. I truly appreciate your efforts and above all, to include people into it, not just being a superman yourself, but include into it and make it, bring it down to their level so that they can also experience it. That is the most vital part which you are doing. It's wonderful and scientific documentation is happening that this is possible for every human being, which is the most important thing because people are just crippling themselves. Yes. Crippling themselves in every possible way. So releasing them from that crippling process is a great thing to do. And I'm glad you're doing that. We hope to meet you in South India and enslave you with South Indian food and coffee and da da da. Yes, I will. I'll take you on on that. Thank you, <laughs> big brother. Thank you very much. Wonderful talking to you, Bim. Thank you. <laughs> Namaskar. Be with us, ride with me.